The story is obviously about bullying, and uh, I tried to find a good definition of bullying. And there's, if you go onto the internet, there's a thousand different definitions of what a bully is. And so this was a very simple one, uh, and, and, and this is kind of geared towards because yesterday, for example, I was talking in Manville School. Um, this is a very simple one that. Uh, young people can usually identify with. Bullying is when you keep picking on someone because you think you're cooler, smarter, stronger, or better than them. And that's, that's kind of what bullying is really all about. But there, there's, there's more to it than that. So I kind of reflected on bullying, you know, because I had a lot of bullying, you know, dealing with bullies in school. But I looked around in our world today, <coughs> and I noticed that bullying is in workplace. This particular uh, News USA Today says more than 90% of employees say they've been bullied at work. I read a statistic, Canadian statistic, that said 75% of people say they've been bullied. I don't know if you've noticed, but governments and politicians bully. It seems to be, it seems to be epidemic these days. I noticed suicides happen because of bullying. And Secret Service put out a study that basically concluded that school shooters are people hurt by bullying. So bullying obviously is a huge, huge problem. A few statistics that I, I came across. 75% 75 75 of people say they've been affected by bullying. That means three quarters of us in here have been affected by bullying. This is one that, as a teacher, I, I found kind of disturbing. Over half of the bullied children do not report being bullied to a teacher. So I heard about lots of, of uh, bullying happening in school. According to this stat, half of them were never even reported. This is probably the one that I probably would say disturbed me the most. 71% of teachers say that they, us they usually uh, intervene with bullying problems, but only 25% of students say that teachers intervene. So, is that a perspective problem? Do students perceive that teachers don't intervene? Is that a problem of teachers like to talk the talk but not walk the talk? Walk, I think is the expression. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer. But obviously it points to a problem. A 2010 research project studying 33 uh, Toronto junior high and high schools reported that 49.5, roughly 50% of students surveyed have been bullied online. Now that's, that's very different from probably most of us in this room and, and, and when I went to school because bullying was face to face. A bully would come up to you and they would insult you or physically assault you or whatever. Nowadays, I would call bullies cowards because they hide behind the computer. I just recently heard, I don't know if I got this all right, uh, um, I think it's my sister-in-law's boss that lives in England or has a family member in England as a 13-year-old son who is being bullied, this is in a private school, I believe, that is being bullied by a teacher, if you can believe, a, a cyberbully. So, you know, it's, it's a huge, huge problem, the cyberbully. All right, when I wrote my story, because I used to think that uh, bullies were bad kids. And a bully was just a kid that needed a good dose of discipline. That's most of my school career as a teacher, that's the way I thought. And so we as teachers would usually end up, you know, kicking the kid out of class or we'd kick the bully, uh, you know, in, into detention or, or maybe even out of school suspension or, or those kinds of things. So bullying was done by punitive measures. And then as I, started researching for my book and, and 
I would say even in the later years of my teaching career, I started to think differently about voting. And I think, and, and my story is built around this way of thinking. Uh, American author Joel Osteen basically talked about hurting people often hurt other people. And they, uh, as a result of their own pain. And that's now how we kind of see a bully. A bully is really a hurting person that is taking their hurt out on others. So, if we can then approach a bully differently and have, you know, address their hurt, and if you can remove the hurt, then we have one less bully. So one less hurting per person is one less bully. Now, does that mean necessarily work for every bully? Maybe not, but certainly for, I think, some, it probably would work. So what makes my work or my book rather different from other books about bullying. I've had numerous, numerous people now come up to me that have read the book, because uh, it's been out since November, November, saying that the thing they like the most about the book is the various perspectives. Because I, and I, I didn't intentionally do this as I was writing it, but it's what came out. Uh, so you, obviously you get the perspective of the bully and you get the perspective of, of the, the victim, their life and, and you know what their thoughts are, what they're thinking. But you also get the perspective of the teachers. You get the perspectives of the principal, the parents. So you're getting multiple perspectives. You know, what's the parent thinking? What's the teacher thinking? I had a uh, person just the other week say to me, it had never occurred to me that a teacher could be scared of a student. But it's true. I've been scared of a student. My daughter just the other day said, she, she teaches grade ones, said she's been scared of a student. This is grade one. So, yeah. So I believe conflicts and challenges could be more easily be resolved if people were able to see things from other people's perspective. That's what my book, I think, that's a strength of my book. I think the other strength of my book is um, it does not use a punitive approach to deal with the book. I won't tell you what the approach is, but you'll have to read the book to figure that out. Uh, it does not use the punitive approach. But don't get me wrong, the bully does have to answer for 